Baseball is old. It's older than dirt. Right. It's really old. And you would think that in that time, they would have ironed out all the wrinkles in the rule book a little bit better. I think they've done a pretty good job. You do? You think so? Yeah, they've gotten to a point you can play it, watch it, or sleep through it. Sure, I guess those are good benchmarks. Three for three. What if I told you that despite being around for so long, there are still changes being made to the rule book, one in particular being made by a player so historic that he did something that had not been done in over a hundred years and got his own rule in the rule book. And that man's name is Pat Van Bitty. Never heard of him. Yeah, neither did I until very recently. <laughs> cool. But it's true because he did do something that had not been done in over a hundred years and now he's got the Pat Van Bitty rule in the MLB rule book. What he did was just be born ambidextrous. He was an ambidextrous pitcher, okay. which makes him a switch pitcher. So he could um, switch between being a righty or a lefty. Okay, so things could get weird. Right. Particularly if you were facing a switch hitter, because now there's two choices to be made. Oh. Who goes first? Who picks yeah, first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who gets the benefit? And this came to be in the middle of a game once. <laughs> so you can actually see the umpires and the officiating crew try and figure out a rule for baseball in real time. For once, it's nice that, like, yeah, it would have been unnecessary for them to spell this out before seeing it actually happen. Right. Just because the odds of this happening must be astronomical. Yeah, and they didn't have to worry about it until 2008. He was playing for the Staten Island Yankees in the minor leagues against the Brooklyn Cyclones. Mm. And switch hitter Ralph Henriquez comes up to the plate, and now there's a little bit of like decision-making happening because Henriquez has just seen uh, Pat Venditti warm up with his left hand. Okay. But when he gets to the mound, he has his glove on his left hand, and he's getting ready to pitch with his right hand. So Ralph switches to the other batter's box. Okay. <laughs> so then Pat Venditti goes, well, I'll just pitch with my oh, own yeah. hand now. Screw that. So he takes off his glove and he switches to the other hand, at which point Ralph goes, well, I'm just going to switch to the other batter's box now. And this happens back and forth for a significant amount of time a while. before the game <laughs> comes to an absolute screeching halt and the umpire spends, no joke, six minutes, six Holy. solid minutes on the field trying to figure out how to deal with this situation that Pat Venditti's very specific physiology has introduced into this game. Wait, so what, what else, like, was this the start of an inning so they could kind of just, like, uh, this mess was, around? This is, ended up being the final at-bat of the game. <laughs> the Brooklyn Cyclones were behind by five runs, and they had two outs already. So very meaningful. So very meaningful, yes. Put an asterisk <laughs> on this game big time. Uh, no, it meant nothing. It meant nothing. It was just a bunch of dudes having a pissing match over a very specific rule that had not yet been written. And as a matter of fact, Major League Baseball watched this happen <laughs> and said, we need to get a rule on the books as soon as possible. Oh boy. And so that this never happens again. Sir, something is happening in Brooklyn right now. <laughs> you need to see this. So MLB puts a rule on the books and they ended up not needing it for another seven years, which is how long it took Pat Venditti to get called up. Oh, uh, okay. Days. And then he, he did pitch his uh, MLB debut in 2015. Wait, so what did the what was the actual rule that they decided? The rule they landed on basically lets the pitcher decide what hand he wants to throw with when okay. he gets to the mound. The actual text is, a pitcher must indicate visually to the umpire in chief, the batter, and any runners the hand with which he intends to pitch, which may be done by wearing his glove on the other hand while touching the pitcher's plate. Okay. So you walk up, you pick what hand you want to pitch with, and then the batter decides what box he's going to stand in, and then you just do that at bat. Okay, in. so and that's per at bat. So uh, right. Okay. So he can switch in between batters if he wants to. Okay. But as soon as he goes up to the pitcher's plate with that ball in his hand, he's got to pitch with that hand for the rest of the appearance. That's pretty cool. I think it's cool that your weird physiology is literally changes the rules of a game. I'm not. Like, I don't know, I, being ambidextrous, whatever. You can train for that. You're not impressed by that? Not really. I mean, it's like you can train to be think, ambidextrous. I don't think you can. You can't, I don't think you it's totally like a 10,000 hours thing where you, you to just... You totally can't. I mean, like, I think you'll still have a dominant hand, but you can, like, if you're really good at throwing with your right hand and from an early age you start also throwing with your left, you can get there. 
But then to also become a professional baseball pitcher well, that's, with that skill? Yeah, that, I mean, sh there's luck involved or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Work. You work real hard at it. Yeah. But yeah, you can train yourself to, to be righty and lefty. I think it would be fun if you could figure out a way to use this strategic advantage in the middle of a pitch and have like <laughs> some sort of neutral like a universal wind up yeah that <laughs> like, a, like a neutral no tells. a neutral wind up that you get you pull the ball over your head with both hands just directly over your head as you're pitching you choose what arm you're going to pitch with and then just follow through with that arm so like <laughs> So what you're doing is like, you do this, and then uh, pitch with the right hand. Uh, no, right hand. And you wind up again, I'm pitching with the left hand. That looks good. That assumes that the batter is also waiting to pick which side yeah, he's going to he swing can do it. from. Yes, yes. <laughs> he's just like standing on a home plate. Just staring it down. <laughs> waiting, waiting. Like he's holding uh, a samurai sword or something. Gotta go left. Yeah. <laughs> I also picture like some sort of maybe, maybe he jukes. Maybe be, if the if the pitcher can choose mid pitch, right? Then the batter should also get to choose mid pitch if he wants to scoot over to the other box or not. The the mound has also been backed up by another like hundred feet to give the batter give more time, time to, to switch. decide. Yes, I agree. Which side to switch? I agree. That's only fair. This is what baseball is going to look like in sixty years. Terrible. <laughs> Just really bad. <laughs> it's really bad. really really worse than now. Love it. Oof. Weird rules. Wow, thanks a lot, boys. What an interesting rule. Let's check in with these fellas in this episode of Weird Rules, where they talk about how the NFL also encountered a problem they should have seen coming from a mile away. And if you can't get enough of these two handsome gentlemen, don't forget to like and subscribe to SB Nation and watch more videos here.